These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. All right, well, if X gets oxidized in a reaction, what does that mean? Do you remember what does it mean if X got oxidized? What happened to X? It loses electrons. That's right. And how about what happened to Y? Right. How do you remember that? Okay, good. I think that is the best mnemonic. So, uh, what does this stand for? Losing electrons, oxidation. Yeah, loss of electrons is oxidation, and gain of electrons is reduction. One reason this is confusing is there's a whole, this is kind of the uh, chemistry definition of oxidation. In organic chemistry or in biology, there's another definition which has to do with gaining or losing oxygens or hydrogens. Like if you're becoming oxidized, that means you're gaining bonds to oxygen and losing bonds to hydrogen. But actually, um, I think in your course, we probably won't need that definition. You're really focusing on the electrons. So we can just stick with this. Okay. So X lost uh, electrons. Okay, good. So um, let's see, what happened then to X's oxidation number? Did X's oxidation number go up or down? How do you know that it went up? Because when you lose the electron, it gets more positive. Right, good. So the key thing that you're using there is oxidation number is just code for charge. The oxidation number of something is just a way of approximating what its charge is. Well, if we're losing electrons, we should be becoming more positively charged, which is moving to the right on the number line. So if uh, Y is gaining electrons, what happens to its oxidation number? because it's becoming more negative, which is moving to the left on the number line, which we could think of as a, a downward movement. Okay, so oxidation number is just a measure of charge. Now, is X here acting like the oxidizing agent or the reducing agent? This is the tripped up part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so because it's, ox it's oxidized, then it is the reducing agent? Is that it? Or is the, no. What do you think? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, X is the what here? It's, it's oxidized, so, so it's the reducing agent. No, no, because it's, it's not oxidizing, it's oxidized. oxidized. X is becoming oxidized. oxidized. Maybe I should say X is getting oxidized, and here Y is getting. Now, what does oxidizing agent mean? The oxidizing agent is the oxidizer. That might be a more intuitive way of putting it. Okay. And the reducing agent is the reducer. Um, so, the oxidizing agent is the thing that's causing the oxidation, um, not the thing that's getting oxidized. And the reducing agent is the, the reducer, the thing that's causing the reduction, not the thing that's getting reduced. So, what did we decide? Which type of agent is this? What the X is? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the, the X is not the oxidizer, so it's Reducer. Yeah, it is the okay. reducer. <laughs> it's the reducing agent. So it's the reducing agent. It's That's reducing. right. Okay. We can think that this is a reaction between X and Y. Of course, if X is losing electrons, somebody must be gaining the electrons. The electrons can't just disappear into the ether. They have to go to some place. If X is losing the electrons, we must be assuming that Y is gaining the electrons over here. Um, that is, Y is becoming reduced. Well, who is reducing Y? X. So X is the reducing agent that is causing X that is causing Y to become reduced. Or putting it another way, um, here Y is getting reduced, which means that Y is gaining electrons. Well, who's it getting the electrons from? X, which makes X the reducing agent. So um, if you're being reduced, that means that you're gaining electrons. Whereas if you're being the reducing agent, that means that you're giving electrons. Another name for losing electrons is giving electrons, right? Because again, when you lose the electrons, that really means you're giving them to somebody else. 
So if y is gaining the electrons here, so, so becoming reduced means that you're gaining the electrons. Being the reducer means that you're giving the electrons. So being the reducer must be the opposite of being reduced. All right, and then what type of agent is y over here? That's right, the oxidizer, it's the thing that's causing X to be oxidized. That is, if X is being oxidized, it's losing electrons, well, somebody must be taking the electrons, and that's the oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agent is the thing that comes in and takes the electrons. Uh, well, Y here is the oxidizing agent that took those electrons. By, by the way, why, why is this called oxidation? Well. Who would, they, who, who would be a really good oxidizing agent? Somebody who really, so who would be a really good oxidizing agent? Somebody who really wants to take or to give electrons? Like a halogen? Right, so, so who would be a good oxidizing agent? Somebody who wants to give electrons or somebody who wants to take electrons? Which of those would make you a good oxidizing agent? Yeah, a good oxidizing agent is somebody who wants to take electrons. So would oxygen be a good oxidizing agent? because it's got very high electronegativity. That's where the word oxidizing comes from. Um, when you react with oxygen, you tend to lose your electrons. So in general, they've given the name for being oxidized to losing your electrons, because that's what happens when you react with oxygen, is that you lose your electrons. OK. So Why is this called? I'm sorry? You want to say it? So could you, I'm just thinking out loud, maybe for things to remember this by, is that oxygen, it wants the electrons, and it's like oxi oxidized oxygen. Could I, could I well, you want to think of that oxygen is a good oxidizing agent. Okay. Oxygen is yeah. a good oxidizing agent. That's where the term oxidizing agent comes from. Uh, uh, that is, so oxygen is something that wants, uh, which means oxygen is something that wants to take the electrons from something else. So after you react with oxygen, you must have lost your electrons. I think maybe the term reduced here comes from the idea that when Y is reduced, its oxidation number has become reduced, or any way we can use that as a mnemonic to remember that this number is going down. And it kind of makes sense that if you're being oxidized, your oxidation number should go up. You have a greater state of oxidation. All right, so the analogy, so it looks like we had some trouble uh, thinking about the difference between these two terms. Well, I, I tried to give you an explanation for why this makes sense, but you don't want to have to puzzle this out on every problem, so you should also just buckle down and memorize that if something is becoming oxidized, then that, that, that gives you the opposite term when you use the word agent. Um, being oxidized means that you're re the reducing agent. We tried to explain why that makes sense, but you should also just memorize that. Uh, again, this, this, isn't, uh, this is just a little difficult because these are unfamiliar terms, but this is a very common I idea. Um, the, the, the basic idea here is that being oxidized is different than being the oxidizer, and being reduced is different from being the reducer. It's just like, suppose that I tell you that I got mugged. Does that make me the mugger? No, right? So it's a very simple distinction between the, um, the thing that got mugged and the thing that was the mugger. Well, here, X got mugged. Someone stole its electrons, right? X was mugged. That means Y was the mugging agent. Y was the mugger. OK. All right, so this is a very important table to have in your notes. I, I think you were already very comfortable with almost all of this, except for this one term over here. Actually, I guess there's one more row. Um, or do we actually put that in here? Um, well, maybe not in here. OK, so uh, this is an important table for the relationships between these concepts. Uh, now a good thing to do would be to talk about the galvanic and the electrolytic cells. Those are certainly very important concepts.